Hello and welcome to Emergency Medicine Topics in One Coffee. I'm Alan Giles, I'm an emergency physician, and today we're going to do something a little different. In fact, we'll do a radiology quiz just for the sake of it. What I'll do is I'll show you the image, and I'll give you a pregnant pause, maybe some thinking music, and then you can write down what you think the answer is. I'll tell you the answer, and if you've got to write, give yourself a mark and we'll tell you them up at the end. Sounds pretty easy? Let's get into it. So the first question, have a look at these two x-rays. What do you think they show? A pediatric Montegia fracture with a fractured ulna and dislocated radius. Now, there are lots of ways of remembering it. Uh, it's easy to get mixed up between those two Italians, Galeazzi and Monteggia. Personally, I use GFR. That is, Galeazzi fractured radius, with therefore a dislocated ulna. If the ulna is fractured and the radius dislocated, it must be the other Italian, Monteggia. Well, it works for me. Next is a pain in the hip. Now I can't tell you which side, that really would be a bit of a giveaway. So good luck with it. It shows a right Sufi, S-U-F-E, slipped upper femoral epiphysis. Now note the opening up of the epiphyseal line and this line, this curvilinear line here, crosses the epiphysis. Here's an interesting x-ray. It's been taken on a child with high fever and drooling. Now there's no history of trauma. What do you reckon it shows? Well, there's a massively enlarged retropharyngeal space. It looks dislocated at C2, C3, but that's just pseudo-subluxation with a bit of demineralization of the anterior longitudinal ligament. What do you reckon the cause is? I'll give you an extra point if you can tell me. Hmm, retropharyngeal abscess. Look, I didn't say it was all going to be easy. Next. How you describe this nasty pelvic fracture following a high-speed motor vehicle accident? Let's see. I reckon there's three potential points you could actually get from this x-ray. Firstly, the right hemipelvis is opened up. I can see an IDC and there's a rapid infusion cannula in the femoral vein. There's a big chance of bleeding out from vascular injury. So if you've got all those three, I'll give you three points. Moving on, how about a radiation multiple choice question? Answer me this, how much background radiation do you get exposed to every year? Three millisieverts are the closest. A two view chest x-ray gives you an idea, gives you about 0.1 millisieverts. Uh, cerebral CT, it's about 2.5 millisieverts. An apto CT, it's about 8 millisieverts. So one point for that one if you get it right. What do you reckon this Circle of Willis investigation shows?
Well, it shows obstruction of the basal artery. Uh, could really do with an interventional radiologist pretty quickly. One point for that. This young lady presented with a cough, some shortness of breath and a fever. What do you reckon this frontal chest x-ray shows for one point? Well, I was a bit unfair on you then. I cheated a bit. I didn't tell you that she's an IV drug user. So here she has multiple staph abscesses. These little circular guys you can see here. IV vancomycin was used. One point. The gentleman who had this CT scan taken of him had to be rapidly moved from the CT scanner and treated. What does the CT scan actually show? Oh, very unpleasant. Bilateral pneumothoraces, and just to make things worse, a pneumopericardium. Obviously, decompression of both the pneumothoraces and the pericardium improve things significantly. I'll give you two points. One if you get the pneumopericardium, and one if you noted the bilateral pneumothoraces. This elderly gentleman presented to the ED following multiple falls, and just a general decrease in cognition. What do you think this CT cut shows? It shows bilateral acute on chronic subdurals. Note the subdurals extending in a curved shape beyond the cranial sutures and the heavier new blood layering out as the gentleman was lying flat on the CT table. I'll give you one point for noting that it was bilateral subdurals and another point for noting that it was acute on chronic subdurals. So that's two points if you get that one right. What three things can you see on these x-rays of a motorbike rider who's come a cropper? Firstly, and most importantly, the lunate is dislocated here. Secondly, you can see a pulse oximeter. And finally, for the third point, there's two interventions done to the hand. There's an arterial line, probably unwisely placed, and a cannula in the back of the hand. So that's three points if you get all those together. Okay, let's keep it going. Is a 68 year old gentleman who presents with pretty severe chest pain. A CT scan of the chest with contrast was performed and shows the cause. What do you reckon it is? Well, it certainly does show a cause for the chest pain, a dissection of the ascending aorta, with contrast here and a thrombus here. Incidentally, the descending aorta over here looks okay. OT beckons. Moving away from the chest now, here's two x-rays, two different patients, two different pathologies, both with distended abdomens. What do they show? One point for each if you get them right. On the left of the screen, as you're looking at, is a sequel volvulus. On the right, a sigmoid volvulus. Two points if you get them both. Onward we go. 
Here's a CT cut of a 46 year old with right loin pain. What two things can you see? Well, firstly, there's a hydrourator. Secondly, here we can see some perinephric stranding. The patient, of course, has got renal colic with an obstructing stone. Two points. I don't think this next one's too hard. It's an obese man who's presented with shortness of breath, a little bit of chest tightness, and lightheadedness with a blood pressure, systolic blood pressure of 80. A CT of his chest was done with contrast. What do you think? Well, the CT performed with a CTPA and it shows a big saddle embolus. It's time to seriously consider thrombolysis. One point. This one I think is a little bit tougher. A toddler presents to your emergency department following a seizure, but remains unwell following the seizure. The following CT scans performed. There's two striking features I'd like you to try and demonstrate to me for two points. Good luck. Okay, so those two striking findings. Well, the first, there's a large right cerebellar mass. And secondly, I wanted you to notice hydrocephalus from obstruction of the fourth ventricle. Get both of those, I'll give you two points. Next, a 62 year old man presents with abdominal pain and lightheadedness. Now they decide to do a CT scan rather than the more useful bedside ultrasound. Could you tell me two things, two very important things that you can see on this CT scan for two points? Okay, well you can see the aortic aneurysm with contrast inside it and thrombus. For the second point, I wanted you to notice that unfortunately it's ruptured as you can see here. You've done well, here's the final image. So this is of an elderly lady who felt really unwell following a bout of vomiting. She's got shortness of breath, she's got some chest pain and she's hypotensive. Have a look at this CT scan. There's two things I'd like you to see on the CT scan, so that's for two points. And the final point is for what is the underlying problem that's caused this. So I'll give you three points. Well, there's a fair bit happening here, isn't there? Bilateral effusions, here, and air in the pericardial sac. So what caused it? Yep, Borhaar syndrome, vomit, esophageal rupture. And that'll give you the third point if you got that right. Okay, Adam up, how did you go? Over 15? I'll tell you what, if you got 30 out of 30, you better give me a call. Maybe I've got a job for you. Okay, well, thanks for doing today. I think that'll just about do for a radiology quiz in one coffee. It's a bit cold. I'll see you all next time. Cheers.